I'm going to just kick off with a quick clip of uh, me awarding uh, the Fat Loss Award to Ravi at Quirk. So this is at Quirk Cape Town. It's your opposition, guys. Make notes. <laughs> Really quick, we've got a, a really great announcement to, to make. And so I'm going to really hand it over to, to Elan. One of uh, your guys says that it's a phenomenal result in our last uh, challenge. Essentially, what we're about is about creating healthy lifestyles for people and uh, upping your mojo. And so today is really Ruby's moment. So I think I'd like everyone to give Ruby a big cheer. <laughs> Beach ready and, and abbed up for the center. And, <laughs> the story and the reason why you guys are here is to thank you because, from all accounts that I've heard, Rob's given me a testimonial. Apparently, you guys have been a great support um, to Ruby in his quest. And that's what Sleek Geek is about. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not a diet plan or a workout plan, or whatever it is. We're a community of, we're a social community, and I mean, that's what you guys can resonate with. It's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's about letting people feel like they're not alone. And that's what you guys have done for Ravi. Especially what you know saying is that uh, the reality is all of you who have significant part in my progress in this last eight weeks. And I'm very fortunate that my trainers are with me as well. I mean, uh, where do you have to deal with my complaints? Uh, <laughs> I've been totally grateful for each and every one of you. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, see you on the beach. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, cool. How's it going? Sorry, I was a bit late. It's not my style, but I got caught up in a meeting. So, but I'm actually, it's it's not a long presentation. I'll try and move through it very quickly, and then you guys can uh, ask me any questions you want to ask. How I'm going to make money, all those kind of things. Um, but essentially, <laughs> but I think essentially, Sleek Geek was an accident. I mean, I didn't sit in my bedroom and say, oh, you know, I'm going to lose 16 kilograms, tweet pictures of myself without my shirt on, and it's going to like start this whole <laughs> revolution. You know? It wasn't some brainwave like that. But what's happened has been like truly magical, and it's been probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my life, uh, which is why I'm sticking with it. And it's actually weird, because you know, when that image goes up at national TV, it's not that scary. When you put it on the internet, it's not that scary. But when you sit in a room like this, it actually, I do feel a little bit vulnerable. Um, I was on three talk yesterday with Nolene, so half South Africa has seen that, that image. But essentially, the reason why that image has attracted so much power is, you know, I'm just 16 kilograms lost out of almost a ton of geek in the last year. And, and we're looking at maybe two tons of geek by the end of this challenge. And so that's like really cool. I'm just one part. And, and that's why I decided, I was sitting there, I was actually in the shower, and I was thinking, 
you know what, if I can inspire 100 people and 1,000 people, then we can inspire 100,000. You've all seen that movie, Pay It Forward. And you know how social networks work. I mean, we all know each other, we talk. That's how things like Facebook and YouTube and whatever spread in this country. You know, it's, it's dinner table kind of talk. Um, as much as it's online, it's, it's real world stuff. And as you know, I don't have to tell you guys, you're the ones who'll give me the stats on how people listen to what their friends say more than what, what marketers say. So I really think that that's achievable. So at the end of the day, the lesson in this, which I try and teach my community, is that it's about, first of all, knowing what your reason is, desiring it, and perseverance. Because everyone's looking for the quick fix and the magic tablet and you know, six weeks to, to beat ready. And at the end of the day, what we try, you know, I say eat clean, train dirty is our mantra. And it's basically about saying, you know what, if you put good things in your body and you exercise a little bit and you do that consistently, eventually you will achieve the results. And I think it's like with anything in life. Um, was it Malcolm Glad well, who was it who said that like, you know, if you do something for a certain amount of hours, you become an expert? So essentially, um, you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's about persistence and it's about saying, you know, I want to do this. And the reason why I've learned this lesson is because I tried for about 15 years. I've never been in shape um, and I'm still not even 50% to where I'd like to be. But I tried for about 15 years and I always gave up after two months, after three months. And, you know, always like, I can't do this. It's too hard. It wasn't in my stars. It's not in my genes. My metabolism is too slow and, 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 and so on and so forth. And I realized on this time around, you know what? If you actually just stick with it, you can do it. And I had to do some heinous things to get there. It was really horrible. I had to eat food that looked like that. It's disgusting. <laughs> and you know, I had to snack on sugar, snack peas. You all remember Lee, she used to work here. I had to walk up Lion's Head with pretty girls. It was horrible. It was a, it was a, traumatic, it was a very traumatic experience and then go and experience nature and actually feel my body moving, something that I hadn't done for, for many years. And, and everyone's got their start point. I mean, there's a lot of people who, they were fit at varsity, whatever, and then they got married and had kids, and all of a sudden, like, what happened? Um, some people were never, but it's never too late for anybody. Um, and that's, that's really the truth. So, like, this is one of the other images that, seemed, that was flash, flash, flashed around national TV yesterday. Um, so my part's still <laughs> cuck. <laughs> But, but essentially, the thing is that I've bought some years back, and I'm now a better performing individual. And I think, you know, when I was at NASPAS, I ran News24 as general manager for a few years, and I was on the MIH international like, strategy team. And I was one of those people who I neglected my relationships, I neglected everything else, I worked all hours, weekends, um, and essentially never looked after myself. And I now realize in hindsight that had I looked after myself, I actually would have been a better performing employee. Um, and I actually would have put out better work and be been more optimal because I've never had more energy or, or clarity of mind. Um, and sometimes, you know, you've got to give yourself a little bit of space. Does this actually, would it work if I did that? No, I'm going to have to keep jumping. Okay, it'll keep me on my toes. Um, so, okay. I think we've got to, it's a bit strange. Uh, I think my machine just froze. Can that happen with a Mac? <laughs> okay, let me just see what's going on here. Um, unfortunately, this is quite a visual topic. Uh, let's try again. Yeah, so let's. Where were we on that? Uh, yeah, it's. Is it, what's the shortcut, guys? I so Okay, you see, I'm playing for the current slide. See, you're never too old to learn, eh? So anyway, I mean, the whole idea was, so I've come up with this, I, okay, there we go. So, because we all love Facebook, and we love timelines and graphs and all that kind of thing, I've come up with this concept of my life graph. And essentially, I realized, okay, at Avusa and whatever, they were paying me a hang of a lot of money to, look at what happens in two years, five years, ten years, and you know, develop strategy around that to respond to the environment. And I thought, well, you know, why don't I apply that to my own life? And when I started doing that, I looked at the current habits that I had, and I was now turning 36, I was about 35 at the time, and I realized that this is where I was heading. I've got diabetes in my family, I was chain smoking a box and a half a day for 16 years. Um, all of these things were in my stars. And I just thought, no, you know, that's not what I want for my life. So essentially what I did was 
when I started my journey, I changed my life path. Now, anything can happen. There's always that guy who, you know, the healthiest guy you know who dies of a heart attack. We take heart in those stories because we think I would have to do anything because I'm going to die anyway. Um, there's always those people on the very outer edges. But what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to minimize my risk. Ironically, I still am years away from, you know, I mean, after chain smoking for 16 and a half years, I still have for the next five years risk of stroke from, from doing that. But, you know, I'm going <coughs> to take my chances. So what I'm trying to preach to people, and preach is the wrong word because we don't preach, is just to be conscious of, of what you're doing. Be conscious that you can be he healthy. You don't have to. Everyone has a choice. But <coughs> you can actually do it, and the benefits are quite profound. So it's just about saying, you know, we're not, we're not cattle that go the, into the, the cattle run every day or whatever. And, and I think that a lot of the time sugar and, and some of the processed foods that we have in society these days are quite addictive. And, and quite honestly, I think sometimes people actually don't have a choice. So it's about saying, you know, be conscious about what you're doing. And that applies to anything. All these things that I'm telling you are life lessons. It's not just about health and fitness. And, you know, do something for your future self. Um, and I think that's the key thing. It's very hard to transcend the now. We, we, we work on instant gratification. We've all done it. I mean, I know the drill a million times over. Oh, you know, I want to have this pizza. No, but I know in the long term it's not going to, but it looks so good. Hmm, you know, I'll deal with it now. And I, I have it. And then you actually find it hard to transcend what does it mean in the long term picture. And when you can do that, then you're on your path. So in terms of what Sleek Geek is, I mean, essentially, we're an activation for people. That's what, that's what the challenge is. And it's about, you know, have you lost your mojo? It's not for, it's not for overweight people. I and mean, we've got a lot of, like, pretty lean, mean people in the community <laughs> who just want to get fitter or, you know, they, they, they want to just get to their six-pack or whatever. So we've got a very diverse community. Um, that's why we have the transformation category as well. It's about just saying, you know what, I'm feeding a little bit off my game. And the community kind of like helps you get back to your game. And that's why I say we're in the business of, of Mojo. And, you know, we operate mainly out of social media. Um, because at the end of the day, it's like, I'll give you an analogy. You know, being in a coffee shop alone these days is okay. Because you've got Twitter. You know, you've got the whole, all your friends. And you never really feel alone anymore in today's world. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys are very engaged in social media. So you'll know what I mean by that. Like, I don't even need a girlfriend anymore. It's Woolworths. I've got Twitter. It's like, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's easy. So, so, so essentially, what we do is we make sure that no one's ever alone. Because if you want to get fit and healthy, generally you're alone. You've got to go to a personal trainer, pay them the earth. You've got to go to a dietitian. But they don't really, you know, you're doing it alone. Um, maybe you've got a partner who supports you. But the sleek geek, you, you're never eating alone. You're never training alone. And actually, weirdly enough, these people do really care what happens to you. And that's been the most amazing thing. So by the end of the summer challenge, there's about 300 people on the current challenge. I'm forecasting we would have been responsible for about 200 kgs, 2,000 kgs at least, of, of, of South African digital worker. Um, and remember, that's just the guys who do the challenge. There's so many people who don't do the challenge. Only about 10% of our community actually do the challenge. And then there's all the wives and the husbands who have to suffer the, the good food and, and that kind of thing, you know. I mean, I don't know how many people I've spoken to that have said, oh, you know, my husband also lost eight kilograms because we were cooking differently at home. You know? um, and, and so that's just the, the accounted for. So Ravi, who you saw in the beginning, I mean, all these people, I take very personal interest in their lives. That's Ravi and I playing uh, geek cricket two years ago. Um, so that's the old Ravi and the old me. This is the new me and the new Ravi. And he's, he's on his way. And if any of you know Matthew Buckland, you'll know how satisfying that moment was because I just hit him for six to win the match. <laughs> and it was probably, that was probably like one of my career highlights, you know. Um, but that's, that's, and then Cameron, he's a UX specialist at Fin24. Here he is just about to get divorced by his wife after she cheated on him. Here he is at my birthday in July after losing 21 kilograms. And we got a new man. And he's on his way to, to his next step. So what we're doing is we're changing people's lives. JP, who won the first, uh, ladies, you can. <laughs> JP won the first challenge. Um, that, he didn't do this in six weeks. That was what he was in 2010. But like basically, that's, that's the path that he's been on. That's him now, recently in Thailand. So people are keeping it up and maintaining. And he's becoming an ambassador in our community. Mark, head of digital at, uh, um, at Avusa, the, the books that they run, um, basically is part of the book division. And I used to always pass his test and say, come on, Mark. He's like, oh, I've got no time. I've just had a baby. I'm so, I said, just eat well. I said, you don't even have to exercise. Because one thing, if I, if I can leave you with one thing, 70 to 80% is what you put in your mouth. Everyone like, gets so surprised by it. 
But the guys that get results, they realize you can train all you want, you can go to gym for, you can do two sessions a day, do whatever you want, you've got to fix your eating if you want to get the results. So like Mark is now a new man, he's energized, and the thing is you're not just seeing weight here, you're seeing different people, you're seeing people with a different confidence, you're seeing a different energy, their relationships are improving, and everything in their life, Amin did really well on the first challenge, and, and I like to use him as an example because he just did body weight exercises, and you know, you don't have to go to a gym to get in shape. Derek did extremely well in the last challenge. I mean, he pushed it to the max. I mean, he was rowing like every night, 4Ks or whatever. Um, you don't have to do that. I don't even train that hard. I train like three, four times a week. Um, and these are just like some of the, I'm not gonna talk through each one, but like these were the results out of 90 people that we got, I mean, Claire lost her cellulite. She was like, she actually wrote me a letter before this and said, you know, this is like the, the pain of my life. You know, you look at the person, you don't know, what's, you don't know what stuff they, they, they're dealing with, you know. Um, you look, oh, that looks like a, a good looking girl. But like, this was the thing, a bane of her life. And, and she lost it because she changed her eating and she was elated. My friend Joe. So basically, I tell all these people's stories. And that's the key. I mean, Jono, you all know Jono AB from Twitter. I mean, he was like, he's like Mr. Jim on Twitter. He was kind of my inspiration. He's always been Mr. Jim. But, you know, I mean, that was him a couple of years ago. He used to be even thinner. He was a drug addict. Um, within an inch of his life and he decided you know what and he started to get active and, and he always says that Jim saved his life he's now 95 kilograms of pure muscle Taryn one of our judges I mean she's done an amazing transformation she decided to set herself some people like small little goals she decided she gave herself a year to enter a fitness competition and she dropped about 20 kgs which on a woman is a lot of weight um, and look what she did you know um, Sleek Geek's pretty much just me, but I've got a little helper in Eric, he's a student, so I abuse him and pay him a little bit of pocket money. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, my values are to work with people who understand what it is to be in a transformation. And, uh, I mean, look what Eric did, I mean, that's, that's a two-year progression, but I mean, jeepers. Um, other than the hairstyle, um, <laughs> he did really well. So essentially, wh what I'm doing here is I'm building an army, and this tree just keeps growing and growing and growing because people inspire other people and somehow everyone kind of is connected. You know, Chris Mills, Ahmad, he did really well in the first challenge that we ran. He's regressed a little bit now, but his blog post inspired Amin to actually do the challenge. And so what we're doing is people are creating change in other people's lives. Um, so I'm empowering people to be leaders. And when you start to become a leader, you take on responsibility and it's much harder for you to backtrack. And that's why, you know, now, for example, we've launched a cooking site called Eat Clean. I've got about five people working on it from the community. That's the thing. They volunteered. And, you know, one of the old Israeli prime ministers, Ben Gurina, used to say something like, there's, no, there's nothing stronger than the heart of a volunteer. And it's really true. If you can actually, if you can capture that, <laughs> it's a very true statement. And so, like, Cameron, who I helped out, he's now brought Steve in. Steve's 200 kilograms. He's now lost his first 15 in the last two months. And we go out sometimes, I'm going walking with him on Sunday, he lives out in Somerset West. Everyone gets involved in everyone else's lives. So what are my goals? My mission at the moment, which is relevant to you guys, is to, I basically, I want to get the digital workers in South Africa up and moving. I'm going to start doing a series of office workouts. I think some of you guys did the Letitia, maybe. Um, I don't know if, if it was distributed. But essentially, <laughs> I just want to get guys turned on to the idea that you know you can live a healthy life and be a lot, a lot more optimal and optimized. And whoever's out there who wants to respond to that, that's cool. We don't preach to anybody. We're there for guys who kind of want that. But I can tell you that I believe in my product because life is just much better when you when you fit and healthy and strong. And you know, help educate people, inspire people. I mean, we're here to inspire, and then build a framework that can give people lasting results. So I don't really want to talk about the stats because my, st my, my metrics are my people, they're my results, you know. Um, but I know you guys like to see numbers. So that's, that's the growth so far in terms of the challenge entries. So we've got about 300 now in this current challenge. I mean, it's off a low base. Normally entrepreneurs only give you percentages because they don't want to show them. So, but it's fine, I'm, I'm open. Um, so that's, that's the growth and I think it's gonna, it's gonna get even bigger. But what I'm really excited about is the Facebook group is really our core. Um, that's where the community really lives. Until you've been in our Facebook group, you don't really know what Sleek Geek is. Um, because the Twitter is just like, is just skirting the surface. And in the Facebook group, we've now 
gone to about 1,500. And this is monthly growth. Eh? So it's starting to move quite nicely. Um, but talking strategy, I mean, I wanted to bring it back to social media for you guys. Um, at the end of the day, the Facebook group is where my core activity and the bonds really form between people. It's like a discussion. We have some, some viral aspect because Facebook's a bit naughty about their feeds, you know, in terms of what gets into people's news feeds. So some of it spills over. It's not entirely closed. Um, the, the page, you know, they're trying to push people to use pages and they give people marketing tools in the pages and insights and all those kind of things. But pages aren't good if you want to have a conversation. Pages are very good to tell. Because if your, if your consumers want to give you feedback, it kind of gets relegated to the, to the right-hand side and rolled into like one line. So you don't really give them a good opportunity to talk to you. Um, so that's why I've gone with, with the group, because essentially we're about conversation. So you pick your strategy accordingly. I also believe that it's good to get competent. And then Twitter, Twitter's just a reminder service. That's where I bring the noise. You know, it's just like, it's just a reminder service. And we found that people, I thought they'd get annoyed, but they find that this incessant reminder actually somehow subliminally like just keeps reminding them to like try to do the right thing. It's actually interesting because I thought what would have evoked an extremely negative response. A lot of people, overwhelming mem number of people tell me that that constant feed in their, in their Facebook feed actually just keeps reminding them to, to keep going. And, and, and yeah, once you're in the group, I mean, it's very hard for me, maybe you guys can help me communicate it, but it's very hard for me to show what actually help happens in the group there. Like in that group, there's so much emotional stuff that happens every day. It blows me away every day. Like, I never, you don't get gratitude in corporates, you get a salary, you know? Um, that's the gratitude. Like in this thing, people thank you every day. Like it's just so gratifying. So Twitter's a reminder service, and I think you should become competent in two, me in, in two places before you expand. And I'm getting comfortable there now, so now I'm going to start rolling out a Pinterest, and, and I think that's going to work quite well, because what are they, like men have got porn and women have got Pinterest. So, and I think a lot, of, a, lot of the, a lot of the subject matter, you know, lends itself to that visual kind of environment and the pinning and the sharing and that kind of thing. So, how are we doing for time? It's two, th we, we booked till three, right? Okay, because I did put down a few lessons or tips because I, I want you know I mean I want to bring it back to the social <laughs> media side as well. Um, so essentially, I mean here are just some of the things in retrospect because you know I'm just doing what's naturally to me. But if I had to like write a list and say, okay, well these are the things that I would say would be like good things to focus on on your social media strategies, and, and obviously they're relevant to to Sleek Geek in itself. Um, you know, I mean, I think either way, you've got to give something of value. And, and that sounds so obvious, but how, so many times people don't. They really don't. Um, I think being helpful, like actually showing people that you care about what's going on in their lives and genuinely meaning it. Because, you know, I mean, kind of caring and, you know, it's, it's, it's a different thing. You've actually got to really mean it. And that's where I think companies and even agencies will have a tough time because somebody just gets given a task. How much do they really resonate with that community? Whereas, you know, in my case, I live, I live the community. Uh, essentially, I mean, I'm just a glorified community manager. I mean, that, that doesn't earn anything. <laughs> um, and, and essentially, what I, what I think is key is to tell stories. People respond to stories. They really do. They, 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 can, they can look at something, they can identify with something, and it just takes on like a whole different message and strength of its own. And that's how you start to build ambassadors. And, you know, I think do something inspiring and meaningful. I mean, you know, I always, I always think to myself, oh, you know, what if you're like an OMO or an insurance company, then you, you can't employ any of these strategies. But then I think about insurance. I mean, the thing that they did with the pointsman in Joburg was very clever. It alleviates a problem. It's, you know, I mean, I think any brand can find a way to, to basically do something inspiring um, or relevant with their audience. And I think most importantly, I would say create advocates, not fans. Um, because, yeah, you know, you can have 10,000 people like your page and never come back or, or whatever it is, but when you've got people at every bride, every dinner meeting or whatever telling their friends, I mean, my guys are like marketing machines. Um, they're out there, they love Sleek Geek, they just love it, and, they co and, and I have to keep them loving it, that's my job. Um, not to break trust with them, just to keep them loving Sleek Geek. And the more they love it, the more it's going to spill over. And, and I've actually had like a personal journey around this because I come from an environment where marketing solutions, you go and pay a whole lot of money and you, you shout and you try and get as much reach as possible. But I learned, um, introspecting in the last month or so, 
that all I need to do is just focus on the people who already love Sleek Geek and they will do the work. Um, it's not about going out there and trying to find a whole bunch of new customers. And I think that that's, that's really the key is, you know, get those guys who, who are loyal to you. Become an expert, make some noise. I and mean, people now ask me about health advice. I'm like, what, really? <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> um, I, 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 try, I try to stay away from it, though. Um, but I connect people to the right people. Um, and, you know, do a feel-good thing, set a big goal, appeal to the influencers. You know, it's not always, I, I see all these brand ambassadors that, that suddenly it's like a new thing on Twitter. I'm the ambassador for this and that, and whatever. And it's not always that person who's going to spread your message. It's the people below them who are retweeting them. They the they kind of like the, the the parasites. Those are the guys you want. Like identify those people if they're in the sector that you're interested in. Because a lot of the times the celebs can't be asked to actually do the job. Um, you know, they meant to endorse stuff. It's like a schlep to get them to actually do anything. You know, so it's the guys below them who's spreading the message. Those are the guys you want to get. And then you know, connect the community to one another. I mean, the the most liberating thing that I ever did, like. I don't have to be in the group now all the time. Initially, I always had to be there, like make, setting the tone, setting the values. Make, now, I can spend a day without being in the group, and my guys do it for me. I mean, yesterday, when I went on 3Talk, I had about 100 people come into the group as a result of the show. And then I, I had some plans last night, so I couldn't be online the whole night. My community stepped in, welcomed everyone, started sending them links to where to start, and the whole educating them around the rules and you know they just basically took over and um, you know lead by example that that I think is key I mean this is obviously very relevant to, to what, what I'm doing here but essentially you know you need to lead by example if you want people to follow you um, push a message that cannot be refuted I mean nobody in this room can say to me it's a bad thing to be healthy <laughs> I mean you know <laughs> You can't, there's nothing you can say to it. You know, you can say I choose not to be, but you can't tell me that my, you can't refute my message. You know, um, <coughs> and you know, choose the correct platforms. Now that's an interesting one because coming from a corporate background, if I walked into the boardroom and said, "Guys, I'm going to use a Facebook group for this thing," I would have like either been fired or like laughed out of the room because we've got to own everything. You know, how can we how can we do it in Facebook? We don't own it. You know, it's not our data. What, what it, you know. Essentially, like it would never have flown to use a Pinterest outcome or whatever it is. But now I'm the guy in the garage, you know, and I'll use whatever I can I can leverage, and it's actually pretty cool. I find it's, it's I'm achieving my goals. In the background, I'm still building a database, and you know, so um, it's it's nice to be able to like to have that freedom. And once again, you know, don't shout. It's not easy. Like I came out in the beginning thinking, oh, I'm going to shout about the challenge or whatever, and I realized, you know, it, it, it doesn't really work. People don't really respond to that. Sometimes you've got to pull, pull back and just like be a little bit more zen about it. Open honesty, flexibility. Be flexible. Be nimble. I mean, geez, I think the Sleek Geek logo has changed five times. I mean, that's like a record, I think, in less than a year. <laughs> but it, it's kind of like, the digital space, you know, people I think they take themselves a little bit too seriously around things like branding. I mean, maybe that, like to say it in this building is heresy, but, but, but I think that sometimes. I think it's heresy in our client's building. Yeah. Heresy, I think to say it in this building. Yeah, it's what you're dealing with, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, we get it. It's, it's so much of what you're talking about. Sorry. No. Have quicker flow. But so no, much no. Of what you're talking about is felt and lived in the building, but our challenge is to get that felt and lived. Clients, sure. Clients. No, I, yeah, I yeah. can really appreciate that. Yeah. Is this a placebo mic? Because it doesn't sound like a mic. It's oh, it's for the camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, be authentic. I mean, you, people aren't stupid. Like, you've got to be authentic. Like, I mean, uh, and, and I think that a lot of brands find, find that quite hard. I mean, not to single anyone out, but if I think about something like the MTN Yorba, I mean, you can spend how many hundred millions around trying to put that message up. But when I phone your call center and I can't get any help, then you just, then whatever, you know. So, like, why don't you rather take those hundreds of millions and put them into making your call center actually work? And, you know, I think that, that that's the kind of thing where you don't deliver on your promise. Admit when you're wrong. It's just another life lesson. Um, so I think large organizations, they're going to have to be forced to become more personal. Um, you know, coming from an environment like Avusa, I know like the Sunday Times, they'll churn out as many subscribers as they can gain on the other side. 
So they're trying to like do the quality journalism and gain readers and whatever, and then they've got this crappy circulation system with a bunch of underpaid people out there in Brixton or whatever. I mean, it doesn't work. You know, you've got to actually, you've got to become more personal with your with your customers. And you know, we say all these things and they seem so obvious and and it's like yeah, but people don't. The companies don't live them. They really don't. Um, not all of them. Um, and I think. What's quite relevant is I've realized in this little journey of mine that people are lazier. Like, I'd rule out an idea. I wasn't going to do a recipe website. I thought there's a million recipe websites out there. Why would I do a recipe website when there's a million out there for healthy food? Because nobody wants to go and search the internet. They want you to tell them, you know what, this is what you guys need to look at. And they want that work done. I mean, so for example, I, I live a paleo lifestyle and there's something called paleo plan. So the guys made a whole lot of money out of just simplifying it for people and saying, here's your paleo plan, here's your eating plan, here's your this, you don't need to go anywhere else. You pay me a few, a few rand for that, or dollars. And, and so I've realized that I need to produce very little content. I just need to basically do the selection and the packaging for people. And they'll actually pay money for that. Which is quite cool for me, because I don't want to spend my time producing content. Give people the means to share. I don't know if you noticed, but like, in some of those before and after photos, which we package at the end of a, of a, of a um, challenge, it's deliberately done to look sexy so that they'll share it with their friends. So I've realized my marketing strategy is to just give my guys shit to share, like as much as possible. Like now I'm going to start doing cool t-shirts and you know those Lance Armstrong, you've got one of those Live Strong bands, I'm going to do Eat Clean, Train Dirty. Like, I basically, I just want to give them the tools to go out there and do my job for me. Because clearly my marketing budget is this month's rent. Okay. <laughs> um, so make, make them into heroes. I mean, essentially, like, Ravi now is a hero at Quirk. And he's become an inspiration. And, and what I've essentially done is there was nothing profound about me losing a few kgs. But I was prepared to put it out there. And a lot of people, they're not prepared to actually put it out there. They think it's uh, either egotistical or whatever it is. But like, they, they're too scared to do that. So I help them do that. And then when they start to realize, now that Ravi has realized that I said, Ravi, you haven't only saved your life, you're going to save Steve's life and Tony's life and whatever, because you've told them that they can do it. And now he's all excited. He's like, next time you're on TV, can I come with? And when you go and do your talks, can I come? And like, he's becoming like really like amped to help people. And I think this is one of the really key lessons that I've learned. I didn't learn it in my corporate life, but I've learned it now, and I'm glad that I have, is that focus on the people who really love you, not on your future customers. I think that it's, you know, it's so easy to ignore those guys who already love you and you know, because you're just chasing the numbers. And I've realized I just need to like focus on those guys and the rest will follow. Entertainment's key. I mean, you can even find humor in fitness. We've got lots of sleek geek humor in our, in our group. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of like, like with any little subculture, there's, you, you start to form your own vernacular. So what's the cost so far? Just my time and passion, pretty much. Um, you know, people don't buy coaching, they buy coaches. And I think that's the key thing, you know, is how can you make yourself cool so that people want to buy you and, and not necessarily your product? I mean, that's in terms of my personal journey. Last tips, if you're involved with communities, social communities, just love your community, focus on them, celebrate them, reward them, lead from the front, build authenticity, and unite them behind a common purpose. And then something which will resonate with you guys, which is probably the reason why I quit my job, is I woke up every morning thinking about Sleek Geek and not thinking about my Avusa work. And then I went to my boss and I said, you know, Mike, I said, I'm not being fair to you I'm not being fair to me, and I'm not being fair to these oaks in the sleeky community because I'm not really honoring um, anyone at the moment, and I need to do this, like whatever the consequences, because this is what I wake up in the morning thinking about, and this is what I go to sleep thinking about. And there's that whole chicken, and, I mean, the whole chicken and the pig scenario in terms of like you know being a, an entrepreneur. I mean, the chicken is kind of like, you know, kind of an interested party if you, if you consider like a plate with an egg and bacon. The chicken's an interested party, whereas the pig is like committed, you know. <laughs> and, and so actually, I had lunch with, I don't know if you know, um, Justin Stanford from the, the 40i group. They just sold Mo Tribe now to, to mix it. I had lunch with Justin, and he said to me, he said, are you gonna be the pig or the chicken? And I decided, you know what, 
I love bacon and I eat paleo, so I might as well do that. <laughs> and so if you want to get involved with uh, Sleek Geek, just to end off, I mean, we can do some Q&A now, but if you want to get involved, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can help finance my business, and uh, there's two Mondays left to enter the Summer Body Challenge. Uh, it's an eight-week challenge. You've seen the results we get. Um, people give 20 to 30% extra effort during a challenge. It really works. 80,000 Rand up for grabs, 20,000 Rand's worth of smiles from Bright Smile, New Balance makeovers, a whole lot of cool prizes. So you've got this Monday or next Monday, otherwise it's done until February when we do the Comeback Kid. <laughs> and um, the other thing you can do, which is 100% free, is I really recommend this, it changed my life. It's called the Reboot. Um, it's a 30 day detox. For 30 days you have no sugar, no alcohol, no starch, no wheat, no legumes. And that includes peanuts, so you can't have peanut butter. You've got to have almond butter. Everyone goes, what, what do you eat? Like, that's nuts. But you know what? There's so much to eat. And like, that's pretty much how I eat most of the time now. Um, it just means for three days there's no cheats whatsoever. So you don't, can't have a break, because I'm a bit of a licorice fiend, so I try to break it up with a few, a few sticks of those. But, um, but essentially, like, that's a great way to reset your body, because we, you know, sugar is an addiction. And it, it really, it actually just educates you as to like what food you really need. And I suppose the best selling point I could give you for you guys is that this thing will give you more energy than you earn in your life. Um, I've never been so, and I've never felt such true energy because you know when you take Red Bulls and those things, they're just stimulants. They're stimulants to try and wake you up. It's not real energy. Real energy comes from eating good food, you know. And if you want to get hold of me, then, or the Facebook group, um, you can you can get hold of me personally. You can follow us on Twitter, and yeah, that's that's pretty much the chapter one of the Sleek Geek story. There's so much in the pipeline um, that I'd like to do, um, but yeah, I've only been out of the out of the job now for it's about a month. It feels like a year already. Yeah, so I've been working harder than I ever worked, running around doing stuff. But um, but yeah, there's a lot there's a lot that I've got planned. Um, and a lot to come. So, yeah, you've still got 10 minutes if you want to ask me anything. Where's Jean? Okay, there you go. You look different to your Twitter profile. I mean, your Facebook uh, photo. Yeah, it's a 30 day detox. Yeah. No legumes, no Where's, have you got details of that? More detail than what you Yeah, 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 yeah. It's based on, you know, the whole 30. You know, it's based on the whole 30 works. I mean, about 10,000 people have done that. I mean, it's, it's not something I made up in my bedroom. It really works. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you, you know what the thing is? I'll give you an analogy. JP, that guy who was so ripped there, he still was smoking. So he came to me about two months ago and he said, I want to stop smoking, but I can't. And I said, why? He said, I enjoy it. Uh, um, so I said, okay, fine. I said, when was the last time you remember not being a smoker? He's like, no, I can't really remember. I said, so how can you tell me that you make an informed decision that you enjoy it more than how you would feel if you're not a smoker? And I could see his brain going <laughs> He's like, okay, that makes sense to me. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I said, stop smoking for three months, and if at the end you can tell me that life is better as a smoker, then please, you know, be, be my guest. Um, and now, you know, he stopped smoking, and. He's like extremely happy about it because that kind of like made sense to him. And the re reason why I'm using that analogy is because when you say to a person, I don't eat sugar and starch, they're like, huh, you know, what kind of a freak are you? You know, but at the end of the day, when you cut that out of your diet and you see how you feel, that stuff slows you down. It slows you down. And like now when I have a cheat, um, because I do, I'm a human being, like I believe in an 80-20. I still like to test myself with a bit of pizza. Like, but when I do it now, we get what I call a food hangover. I feel terrible. My body is like, what the hell, dude? Like, my tummy goes funny, I get headaches. It's like the opposite of, if you, get, you know, because your body learns things and your tastes change. I mean, people say, oh, I can't not have sugar in my coffee. That's bleh. But I promise you, you do it for two weeks, you have like half a spoon and it'll be as sweet. So your taste buds change. And it's funny, when you start to get healthy, because I've been doing this for a year now, my body now, for the first time, is in tune. It tells me if it needs vegetables. It actually, I've never, it's an amazing feeling to actually like kind of have an idea of knowing what you need. But it's only because I've like wiped out all that other stuff that suppresses. It's almost like, 
living with like muffles on, you know? And this thing kind of like gives you a glimpse of that, um, I would say. But, but, but the thing is with Sleek Geek, we don't preach. We have a lot of people who have different eating styles in the community. So our mantra is you must do what you enjoy and you can sustain. Um, and it's the same with exercise. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell people, you know what, if you hate going to gym and it's a chore, then you're never going to sustain it. You know, I've been that guy who like for two months went to gym but I hated it. Um, and you know, you get your result for those two months, but then you're back. You've got to find that if you enjoy walking on the promenade, even though it's not as vigorous as going to a gym session, at least in two years time you're still going to be walking on the promenade. I think a lot of people are too black and white. They're kind of like, if I can't do this, then I'll do nothing. It's like the people always say to me, but you've got to have balance. They're the people who've got no balance whatsoever, generally. <laughs> You know, I mean, like essentially, yes, I do have balance. I only train three, four times a week. That's not too, too heinous. And I eat an 80-20. I still, I love my gelato mania on a Sunday. I'll do that, but I'm conscious about it. So when I do it, I know this is bad, but I'm loving it. <laughs> and it's not just like, it's not just like a cattle going to a trough, you know, because I think we just do stuff. I mean, for example, if you don't plan, like I'm assuming the canteen in here, like most corporates, 90% of the choices are probably bad, okay? Even when they look good, they're bad. Because like, for example, Kauai, I wouldn't eat like 90% of what's on their menu. It's just full of sugar and, 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 and junk. So the point is, is that like, let's just say you're doing an 80-20. Now think about it this way. So you're making, you're going to the canteen, you're getting something, you're not deriving pleasure out of that. Because I believe you should eat for pleasure and you should eat for fuel. So you're not deriving pleasure out of that, but you're having it. So you're building this foundation of like a shaky foundation. Then when you go to Alberta tonight and you see the, 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 the my, my favorite thing there is their fondant. It's like out of this world. You see the fondant and you're like, I want to have that treat. And you have it, but you're laying that on the foundation of the sandwich that you had at the canteen. So what I do is 80% of the time, I'm military regimented. But then the other 20, I do what I want and I'm conscious of it and I actually enjoy it. And I know that I can do it guilt free because it's not going to create, it's not going to make any eruptions in my progress. And I think that that's like a formula that really works for me. Um, the other thing that I do is I, I look at this thing, okay, if this was a chocolate fondant, then I would say, you know, is having that thing going to like take me further away from my goal or closer to it? And if the answer is that it's going to take me further away, then my next question is, is it worth it? And it could be worth it for a range of reasons. It could be worth it because I've been thinking about it all week. It could be worth it because I had the worst day of my life. It could be worth it because I'm on, like, it's somebody's major birthday, whatever it is. And then my deal with myself is I have it and then I just move on and I don't even think about it. I don't try and overcompensate. I think people have got too much negative stuff around food. And when you break yourself out of that cycle and you make peace with it, it actually is a lot easier. Um, because I had, I've been through 15 years of all that stuff, you know, and, and, and essentially that, that I think is when you start to like set yourself free. And the last tip that I would give is that weight loss is always a short term goal. Um, I'd always decided, oh, you know, my jeans are a bit tight, I just want to feel a bit better, whatever, and then you get there and then it's like, oh, whew, great, and, then you, you know, and it's like this, you know. And when you decide, the turning point for me was when you decide that you want to live a healthy life then it's very hard to turn away from that. Because then you're saying, well, you know, I'm giving up on that goal of living a healthy life. And it's a very different goal. Um, it's, 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 that, that, that I think is when your life changes, is when you actually say, I want to be healthy and live a healthy life because the rest will follow. It's, it's kind of implied. In the same way that Gavin's sure that I'm going to make a lot of money with Sleek Geek, it's the same kind of thing. It just kind of naturally will follow. That was a long answer. <laughs> Any? We've been approached by, and just change the timber of the, the tone of, have you, have you been approached by VC? Have people approached you? I've had a lot of, uh, the supplement guys are after me quite a lot, yeah. but I don't want to talk to them really. I don't, I don't really believe much in supplements. Yeah. I mean, pe my guys will always take them, and I've been led to believe like certain things, but I mean, I don't take anything. I just take a, I take a multivitamin, and, and yeah. everyone should be taking a multivitamin and omega. Yeah. That's that that you must take. The rest is all bonus. So that, they've been on the trail, but no, not really. I mean, I think it's the usual case. People don't fund. I mean, advertisers don't fund startups. 
they're like they'll sponsor you when you're big you know they don't, they don't really buy into you at that stage so it's been quite a i actually i decided i mean new balance for example um look how nice i am to them hey <laughs> i mean i'm so cheap they gave me like six thousand rands worth of gear and like they get that you know but the point is i went there and spoke to the marketing manager i could have been telling her that i had the cure for cancer i got the usual uh yeah, you know, our budget cycle for this year is tied up and this event and that event we are already committed to. And then that's when I actually decided, you know what, I've spent the last 12 years in publishing begging people for advertising money. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in that, forget it. I will try and get money out of my people for giving them something that they value. And when they stop valuing that, they'll stop paying me. But, you know, it would be nice to have a sponsor come and, 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 and take something on, but... I decided I didn't want to run around begging for advertising money. Um, because even though people think it's a great idea or whatever it is, they're still after the reach. They still haven't equated the value. The fact, my 2,000 people or whatever it is in my Facebook group, the, 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 the power that they actually have. Because the decision-making opinion that I'm, in, that I'm forcing with them, I can make them a New Balance community, I can make them a Reebok community, and those guys can't see the value of that. Because they want to be able to tell a boss upstairs about the reach that they bought, or you know what it is, you know I mean? So I thought, ugh, I don't really want to fight Have you this. Approached Adidas? No, not yet. I haven't approached anyone really. No. But um, but yeah, I think this thing once once it once it get, it'll it'll get bigger. Yeah. And and then and then I'm going to be create. I'm going to basically be con controlling a buying channel. I mean, at the end of the day, I wonder why people ask me how I'm going to make money because I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. I mean, yeah. I'm activating people. So take a guy like me. I mean. A year ago, I would have rocked up here in a polo shirt, um, some nice swanky uh, black shoes and whatever it is. So my wardrobe has changed. I go out differently. When I go to Caprice on a Sunday now, I wear like a sports top. Um, so a year ago, in my wardrobe, there was no gear. Um, I, in the last year, I've spent thousands of rands on shoes and all sorts of things. So when I activate people, these are the people who weren't taking vitamins. These are the people who weren't buying sports gear. These are the people who didn't care about nipple rash, you know, when they're running, you know, and, and essentially they now do. And so and I'm controlling the decisions they make around buying. So I think ultimately I'm optimistic, yeah. But the key is to be true to them. Like, don't. I mean, for example, Men's Health. They do a challenge sponsored by Coke Zero. Okay. Now, I wouldn't do that because why do you want to associate a health challenge with a brand that has got so many question marks around it in terms of like the negative effects of asp aspartamine, for example? And look, you've got to be able to draw the line somewhere. I mean, I'm not trying to become, be a Nazi about it, but the point is, is like, I don't want to ever be in a situation where one of my community says to me, you know what, you've sold out. Um, I don't want to put myself in that situation. That's why I like the apparel guys, because short of us finding that they got some sweatshop in Vietnam, it's very hard that there might be some kind of an issue. I um, mean, that's why I'm staying very clear of the supplement guys. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I mean, USN, it just stinks, you know. I mean, every second person you talk to has got a theory about what they really put in their protein. or And there's no, in South Africa, there's no regulation. Like in the States, you've got uh, a body that actually regulates. Um, so when they talk about blends, and I mean, the quality of the stuff that's in there, I mean, you don't, you don't know. But most of the time, it's just a placebo anyway. Um, so it's a money-making racket, I mean. But, but yeah, so we'll see where it goes. Eh? I'm, I, I think it's just the... Uh, you know, um, that whole book, The Secret, where it says, you know, like, you know, do good things, whatever, and you'll attract abundance. I mean, I've seen it. People just want to get involved all the time. I mean, the fact that, you know, I mean, your boss is so enthusiastic about it, I mean, it just shows it's the sleek geek kind of thing where it just rubs off. Like, people just love it. It's a feel-good thing. I mean, it spreads. And it spreads because it, it's good.